Okay, um, what I want to do in this video is show you guys a little bit of how you are going to, how you can kind of manipulate these, <clears throat> the Pythagorean identities um, to help you in problems. So, in, it's not always going to be as simple as, like in some of the identities that, some of the problems that we have done, it is, come out that there's a sine squared plus cosine squared in your problem. So you can just replace that with one. Or there's a tangent squared plus one. So you can uh, replace that with a secant squared, okay? It's not always gonna be that simple though. What if I got um, in my identity somewhere, what if I had like one minus cosine squared? Okay, so if you see stuff like that, first of all, it's really important to recognize when you can use your Pythagorean identities. So first of all, you have to have a squared somewhere, like a sine squared, a cosine squared, whatever. You also, there also has to be addition or subtraction with it because in all of them, there is addition and subtraction. So if you see something like this, where you have a one minus cosine squared, or um, maybe you have a cosecant squared x minus one, okay? You might look at that and go, mm, that kind of looks like these, but they're not exact, okay? But that's okay, you can still use them. Because these are identities and we know that these are true, that sine squared plus cosine squared equals one, you can rearrange this. Right, so because I have one minus cosine squared, if I was to take this problem up here and subtract cosine squared from both sides, which I can do because I know it's an I know it's an equation, I know it's an identity, so I can move things from one side to the other. I have that sine squared equals one minus cosine squared. Right, so now. I saw this in my problem and now I have that exactly there in my identity so I can just replace that one minus cosine squared with sine squared, okay? Same thing over here. Let's say in your identity or like somewhere in your problem you saw cosecant squared x minus one, okay? And you go and you look and you see that it's a squared and you see that there's a minus one and you might look at that and go, huh, all right, it looks kind of like that one. So let's see here, but it's not exact. Okay, it doesn't look exactly like this, doesn't look exactly like one side of this. Okay, so basically the point is you're trying to rewrite this identity so it looks like the thing that you have in your problem. Okay, well, how can I rewrite this to make it look like that on one side? Well, if I subtract one, I would get cotangent squared x equals cosecant squared x minus one. And now you have one side of your, of your identity looks exactly like what was in your problem. So you can just substitute that in. Okay, so when you have, and this really only is, comes up with the Pythagorean ones because they're the only ones that really have like addition and subtraction in them when you're verifying stuff. Um, so don't forget, you can always take these identities and rewrite them so that one side of the equation looks like what you have in your problem, okay? Um, and now how would you recognize whether it's something you can use with that or not? Again, look for the square, like the trig term that's squared and look for a one or a minus one or something. Like it might even be something like, um, maybe you have secant squared x minus tangent squared x. Okay. Again, right off the bat, you have squared terms that are trig terms and there's addition or subtraction in there. So right off the top, you should probably recognize that a a trig identity or a Pythagorean identity could be useful here. So because I see that, I'm gonna look at my identities and I notice that this one has both tangent and secant squared, or tangent squared and secant squared, like this. 
So you look at this and go, can I rearrange that so one side looks like this? Well, yeah, if I was to take tangent squared and subtract it over, let's do that. I would get that one equals secant squared minus tangent squared, okay? So then I could just replace that with one, okay? Now, it's not always, sometimes you might get tricked. Like if you see something like, um, let's say you see something like sine squared minus cosine squared. There's nothing you can do with that, okay? Because there's no way that you can take this and rewrite it so that it looks like that. Okay, you can try all you want, but it's never gonna look exactly the same. Okay, so just be careful. That would be something where you couldn't use it, but look at it at first and you could try and see, but just remember that it's not always going to work.